This should have never happened. It is unacceptable. Our customers need to know that they can count on our cars, our trucks, and most importantly, our word. Because of the actions of a few people and the willingness of others to condone bureaucratic processes that avoided accountability, we let these customers down. Boy, did they ever. Just when you thought it was safe to go back to the dealer's lot and place your trust in General Motors, surprise! Welcome back to Midpoint. Read and watch her at laurenfix.com. See her appearing across the country seeking to make the U.S. a smarter auto nation. And also here on Midpoint, the car coach Lauren Fix joins us once again today. Hello, Lauren. Hello, Ed. Here we are again. We gather at the altar of recall. It's happening. We'll talk about that momentarily. But here we have General Motors now going in front of Congress in a couple of days. Actually, I think it's tomorrow. And they are going to, again, try and make some sense of everything that's gone on here. But again, Lauren, there are still federal prosecutors involved. There is still, there's still information coming out that shows that GM lied. So, I mean, <laughs> and they're still selling cars. Please make sense of this to me. Well, it appears that their general counsel, Mr. Milliken, will be on Capitol Hill along with Mary Barra and the CEO of Delphi. Now, Delphi made the switches. This should be very interesting, and I will be listening very intently because the fact is Mr. Milliken claims the, as I say, the excuse du jour is, I didn't know about this till January. <laughs> so that seems to be everybody's story. Like, nothing happened before January when the truth is this started coming out in 2007. And anyone that had a claim that was more than $5 million against GM those cases that are already closed would have to go to the general counsel. So conveniently, and then this I, we don't have data for yet, but we'll have it tomorrow, that anything under $5 million was handled by the underlings of Mr. Milliken. So Mr. Milliken says that he was unaware of all of these legal cases that are closed, and guess what? They now have the opportunity to open them under the Volucas report and under what Kenneth Feinberg is doing. So if we look at this, and there are states now involved, at least a dozen states are investigating General Motors right now. According to reports, the state officials say the effort is likely to focus on whether GM broke consumer protection laws. All right, you're very familiar with these, dealing with the automakers. Did they indeed break consumer protection yes. laws? It appears as though they have. I mean, from a legal standpoint, it's always going to be different in the court of law than it is in reality. But for you and I as consumers, they did. They did not let us know that this was going on. They kept it under wraps, said there was no consistent pattern, which there was. And what's interesting about the whole thing is now even the SEC, the Security and Exchange Commission, is getting involved. There's going to be a lot of prosecution involved, not just on a state level, but on a federal level. And in addition, Claire McCaskill, who is running this GM basically whole hearing has said that she now wants to bring the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration back in front of the panel and I think she should and the fact is they got off scot-free by saying oh we didn't get enough data from GM the fact is they did get enough data and over the years three different people had noticed spikes in data with airbags not deploying when ignition switches were in the off position they got data they had complaints from consumers they brought it to whoever their senior bosses were, and it conveniently disappeared. Now, I still say, somewhere in the mix, Mr. Stephen Ratner, who did know about this, and it is in the Volucas report, did nothing about it. Listen, when the government gets involved in private business and you see something like this going on, there's a lot of people that either dropped the ball, chose not to get involved, whatever it is, but the bad part of this is you and I as consumers had no idea until now. All right, as consumers then, is there really any reason whatsoever for consumers right now to have confidence if they go out, try to buy a General Motors car, knowing that things have been taken care of, if they also know at the same time that this investigation goes back to 1999, perhaps, all the way to the 09 bankruptcy, and they know yes. that there is a consistent level of lying that was done in this company for so long. Well, I think that's a personal choice. Uh, I've had that conversation multiple times over the last few months with people who have said, you know what, I will never go back to that brand. And other people have said, you know what, I've been a GM person my whole life. They've produced good quality cars for me personally, and I'm going to stick with it. You know, I, I think they make some really phenomenal product, especially when it comes to the Corvette, which I'm a huge fan of. But in, in other cases, I mean, I do have a little bit of doubt in my mind as well. But every manufacturer has had recalls. 
And I think it, it's up to you as a consumer to be proactive. If you get a technical service bolt in the mail, if you're contacted by the dealer, you bring your vehicle in and you get it repaired and you're satisfied, then that's up to the consumer to make their choices. There's a lot of great product on the marketplace and GM does make some really good products. And I'm expecting some big changes now that we have Johan Dinesh who left Audi, went to Infiniti, and conveniently last Friday is now employed by Cadillac. So I'm looking forward to some real positive things coming out of Cadillac in the near future. Very briefly, BMW recalled 1.6 million 3 Series cars for airbag problems. We've talked about the airbags before. Everybody's running scared right now, aren't they? I tell you what, if I had a manufacturing business that was making cars and car components, I'd be very concerned. If there was any question about people coming back, a flow of consumers about the same issue, you're better off making the recall. I mean, Scion had a recall on a trunk latch that was made of plastic and they're replacing it with metal because they're concerned about it wearing. Okay, is that a serious issue? No, but who would want to be caught in that? And no one wants to be the next Toyota, the next GM. So BMW is being very proactive. They make quality cars and a lot of the German manufacturers are super proactive. Uh, Tanaka made their airbags and they were produced here in the US. They were stored in a warehouse that had moisture and they were actually discharging. The hard part about this is the metal framing around it was causing metal shards to come out at consumers. So I, in this case, it's very serious. And in this case, if you have a three series, go to the dealer, get it taken care of. It's not gonna cost you anything. 30 seconds, a Milwaukee attorney says he's won a settlement in his lemon lawsuit against Tesla Motors. The beginning of the end for Tesla? Yes. Well, I, I've said when it comes to Tesla, the federal government has said they're not going to allow them to use their sales model nationwide, which is what Elon Musk wanted. But this gentleman that's in Wisconsin had no Tesla de dealer nearby, which is one of the complaints that I had. There is no brick and mortar stores. And that they've actually, the 12 little Rangers that can come out, they weren't able to make it. So they had to flatbed the vehicle to Chicago to the closest repair center. And it went back enough times that they actually won on a lemon law. And I have to say, that's a win for consumers to know that just because you sell it in a mall setting doesn't...